Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for participating in today's conference call to discuss Jones Soda's financial results for the third quarter and its September 30th, 2020. Before we begin, let me remind everyone of the company's safe harbor disclaimer. Certain portions of our comments today will concern future expectations, plans, and prospects of the company that constitute forward-looking statements for purposes of the safe harbor provisions under the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Forward-looking statements, including all statements containing verbs such as aims, anticipates, estimates, expects, believes, intends, plans, predicts, will, may, continue, pro uh, projects, or targets, and negatives of these words and similar words or expressions. Forward-looking statements are subject to certain risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those indicated by the forward-looking statements. Factors that could affect our actual results include, among others, those that are discussed under the heading risk factors in our most recently filed reports with the SEC, including our annual report on Form 10-K, our quarterly reports on Form 10-Q, in our current reports on Form 8K. In addition, this call includes discussions of certain non-GAAP financial measures, the most directly comparable GAAP measures and reconciliations for non-GAAP measures are available in the earnings release and other documents posted on the company's website under Investor Relations. I would like to remind everyone that this call will be available for replay through November 12, 2020 starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. Our webcast replay will also be available via the link provided in today's press release, as well as the company's website. Now I would like to turn the call over to the interim CEO of Jones Soda, Jamie Colburn. Well, thank you, operator, and good afternoon, everyone. I wanted to start by saying how proud I am of our team for delivering excellent results for our third quarter. Traversing the effects of a pandemic is unprecedented, and our team has done an exceptional job over the last several months focusing on our core competencies and providing best-in-class service to our customers and partners. After six consecutive quarters of revenue decline, we returned to growth with a 17% year-over-year increase in total revenue for the third quarter. With the implementation of revamped digital marketing and social media initiatives, we saw overall market awareness and demand for Jones Soda products accelerate through the quarter. In addition, the retooled sales approach we implemented last quarter, combined with an intense focus across our organization on selling our core product offerings, has begun to materialize in our results. And I firmly believe we're in a strong position to build from here. In addition, we've strengthened our senior leadership team with the appointment of Mark Murray as our president. Mark brings nearly four decades of experience in the CPG and food service industry. Having held executive and various senior sales and marketing positions for well-known brands, including Harry's Fresh Foods, Solo Cup Company, Campbell's Food Company, and Kraft Heinz Food Service. Prior to joining us full-time in September, Mark spent the last several months as an advisor to Jones, allowing him to hit the ground running, and he has already begun implementing strategic initiatives to revitalize our go-to-market approach and sustain growth into the future. Later on, we will have the pleasure of hearing from Mark to discuss operational highlights, how our various product lines have performed, and some exciting growth opportunities on the horizon. Lastly, as we stated on our past two calls, the health and safety of our employees, supply chain partners, distributors, and stakeholders remain our top priority while the world still faces the effects of COVID-19. And we will continue to monitor the situation closely, responding to any changes rapidly and responsibly. However, 
as evidenced by the progress this quarter, we are not letting macro conditions dictate our ability to return Jones to revenue growth and continue improving profitability. We have a highly adaptable team that has proven its ability to adjust in the face of adversity and find alternative solutions when certain growth opportunities are suddenly no longer available. While there's still much more work to be done, this is just the beginning. I am confident in our direction and believe there are ample opportunities for Joan Soda to capitalize on going forward. With that, I'll turn the call over to Joe to walk us through the third quarter financials. Joe? Thank you, Jamie, and good afternoon, everyone. Total revenue in the third quarter increased 17% to $3.5 million compared to $3 million in the year-ago quarter. The increase was primarily driven by strong sales in our core bottled soda products, which were up 40% on a year-over-year basis, but partially offset by the anticipated decline in 7-select revenue. Mark will expand on the status of our relationship with 7-Eleven later in this call. Gross profit as a percentage of revenue increased 430 basis points to 26% compared to 21.7% in the prior year period. The improvement was was the result of optimizing efficiency across our operations. With these optimization improvements, we expect to sustain a stronger margin profile going forward. Operating expenses in the third quarter were $1.3 million compared to $1 million in the same year ago quarter. The increase was primarily due to reinvestments into the business through additional consulting expenditures, marketing initiatives, and launching of the three social, social and digital media campaigns. As we begin reinvesting into the business to execute on various growth initiatives, we will continue to closely monitor our spend to ensure it is calculated in an efficient manner to balance with our current working capital. Net loss in the third quarter improved to $450,000 or negative one cent per share compared to a net loss of $476,000 or negative one cent per share for the prior year period. Adjusted EBITDA in the third quarter improved to negative $324,000 compared to negative $352,000 in the year ago quarter. These improvements to the bottom line are a result of our growth in core bottled sales, focus on optimizing margins, and prudently managing costs, which we plan to continue as we grow the business. Moving on to the balance sheet. At September 30th, 2020, cash and cash equivalents remained flat at approximately $4.3 million compared to one quarter ago at June 30th, 2020. We had $6 million of cash and cash equivalents at December 31st, 2019. This slowdown in cash burn is a direct result of the cost management initiatives and operational efficiencies that we have implemented. Additionally, working capital was $6.7 million compared to $8.4 million at the end of last year. Lastly, the only debt we carry is an outstanding convertible note instrument and our PPP loan. It was a point of emphasis last quarter to clean up the balance sheet as we liquidated slow-moving inventory and eliminated various accounts receivable that we did not expect to receive payment on. Having cleaned this up last quarter, we have a more controlled balance sheet that has positioned us favorably to close out the rest of the year and further into 2021 to continue to support revenue growth and improve profitability. I will now turn the call over to our newly appointed president, Mark Murray, to discuss how the various product lines within our business have performed and the growth opportunities on the horizon. Okay, thank you, Joe, and thank you, Jamie, for the introduction earlier. To start, I would like to say it is an honor and a privilege to be leading the Jones Soda organization, and I am very excited about the opportunities in front of us. Not only do we have a very unique brand and great quality products, we also have an extremely passionate and committed team. The dedication, focus, and execution over the last few months has been very exciting to see. We worked very hard as an organization in building a three-year strategic plan. We now have created the direction, 
gained alignment throughout the organization and they have a great team to execute a plan and we are confident to deliver tremendous results. So let's look at Q3 performance across products, channels, and functional areas. And let us start with sales. If you recall from the last earnings call, we were excited about our June numbers and we're starting to see some great revenue momentum. We are very pleased to announce that this momentum continued to be strong throughout the quarter as we exceeded year ago numbers in July, August, and September. And as Jamie and Joe mentioned earlier, our total third quarter revenue grew 17% compared to Q3 2019. We are encouraged by these tremendous results and we believe this momentum will continue giving us confidence that we will finish the year strong. Also mentioned earlier, our core Jones Soda bottled business played a key role driving the strong Q3 results. The sales team did an excellent job executing against planned promotional programs in both the U.S. and Canada. We saw growth at Costco, Kroger, Walmart, Safeway Albertsons, as well as many other key accounts. We will continue to focus on this business and we'll make sure we close distribution gaps, ensure our partners are taking advantage of our top core flavors, and continue to effectively promote and display our products. We have also allocated resources towards the club channel, which includes retailers like Costco, Sam's, and PJ's Wholesale Club. We feel we have some great items such as lemon cocoa and bulk variety of packs that align well with the club consumer. We are currently working to ensure we have the right products at the right price and the right value proposition to win. Although we have had some success in this channel, we know there is still tremendous upside. So stay tuned for more to come with this very important initiative. We have also allocated resources to help build our food service business. We all know the food service industry has been hit hard by the COVID pandemic, but we believe in the importance of establishing key relationships now, along with creating a pipeline of innovation to prepare ourselves for the future. We will grow this channel through both broadline distribution and a dedicated team focused on regional and national accounts. We know we have some unique quality products that offer opportunities with packaged beverages, fountain and items like frozen slush products. Food service is a relatively small business for us today. However, it will be a tremendous growth opportunity for us in the future. Finally, we are investing in resources that I'll build at the national and regional key accounts in grocery, mass, drug, C-store, and specialty channels. We believe the additional sales support at, the key, at these key account levels across these channels will allow us to drive incremental sales on our core brands and business. Turning to Sub-11 and our co-branded 7 Select program. As we articulated in the last few quarters, we knew this part of our business would continue to be challenged, so we will be exiting this business in 2021. However, our relationship with 7-Eleven continues to be strong, and we are now working with them on several initiatives for next year. We find incredible value in the relationship and are pursuing alternative growth opportunities that are more mutually beneficial and strategically aligned with both the 7-Eleven brand and Jones. This would include selling our Jones-branded bottled soda products on a greater scale and introducing innovation with new slippery initiatives. We are early in the discussions and are very excited about the various opportunities we have in front of us. As a reminder, we do have a strong business in Canada, which includes a 7-Eleven private label and our Jones Soda branded products. This program has consistently performed well. For Lemon Cocoa, we continue to service our current partners, but we remain in deep evaluation mode to determine the most appropriate go-to-market strategy. Although it remains a small portion of the Jones revenue, we are confident in its potential, especially within the health and wellness and club channel. We will keep you updated as we continue to make progress and roll out a more defined strategy. 
Now, moving to our marketing initiatives. On the last call, Jamie announced that we were re reuniting with legendary skateboarder Tony Hawk, and Jones has had a longstanding relationship. Tony and his family embarked on a 10-day tour in a Jones-branded RV, which he documented on his social media channels with his 15 million followers. In addition, his videos drove an incremental 42,000 views to the Jones website. The People's Craft Soda RV continued to make stops throughout the summer, promoting brand awareness and directly engaging with our consumers. We are incredibly pleased with the outcome of this initiative, so stay tuned as we continue to build on the relationship with Tony Hawk to create other marketing plans for the future. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, the marketing team has found new creative ways to continue to engage with consumers. This is all about using our labels as the ultimate platform to display unique consumer per perspectives, engage with them, and ultimately leading to more products sold. Over the summer, we launched, launched our Message of Hope series, displaying positive responses to COVID that included consumer-captured imagery ranging from chalk art, lit up landmarks, murals conveying the notion, being in this together. Most recently, our Vote 2020 initiative turned our bottles into a nonpartisan registration tool by incorporating the QR codes on the labels and taking consumers to a website to register the vote in just two minutes. This initiative alone has generated over 37 million earned media impressions and we're not done yet. I'm excited to share that in January 2021, we'll be launching an initiative around unsung heroes, featuring everyday people who have inspired us by going above and beyond in 2020 to make the world a better place. Our growing photo library of more than 1.5 million submissions has shaped our brand's personality by highlighting our consumers and their stories. We will, of course, continue to honor this tradition in unique and interesting ways throughout 2021 and beyond. As we continue to build our strong foundation as a brand with user-generated labels, we are now also focused on amplifying the message of the people's craft soda. In light of the pandemic, we have begun investing in digital capabilities and paid social media to amplify our message and create brand awareness in a very cost-efficient manner. Not only have we seen excitement and engagement reminding our loyal fan base of who we are, but we are confident we are introducing a new audience to the Jones brand. In fact, since August, we have reached over 6 million unique users through paid social media. We believe our efforts have been effective as we've seen potential consumers engage and express intent in learning more about Jones leading them to our website for more information. In addition, we are investing in influence and marketing to build advocacy, reach new audiences, and ultimately create more engaged fans who we believe will become to love the Jones brand. As we look to scale for growth, we continue to explore marketing technology capabilities that will allow us to accelerate and build awareness and engagement with Gen Z. As we continue to build our digital marketing capabilities, I'm confident that we are creating awareness and, and engagement that will impact growth through the long term. Lastly, we continue to lead the craft soda and the craft soda category in innovation. Going back to the unique and novel flavors that consumers know and love, we are launching a special release program to add variety and excitement to our lineup. Also, and understanding more consumers are stocking pantries during the pandemic, we are launching a multi-pack program. This will include fan faves pack featuring consumer favorites and a 12-pack and a mixer pack, capitalizing on consumer behaviors and making craft cocktails at home. In addition, we are very excited about the product ideation sessions that we are having with key strategic customers. Through these sessions, we are exploring ways our brands can help them drive their business and offer innovative ways to use our products as an ingredient for a finished good to be sold at their location. 
We believe these co-innovation efforts will drive incremental brand awareness, consumer trial, and sales in the food service C-Store and Club Channel. Now let's talk about operations. Although we, we made excellent progress throughout the year, there have been several operational challenges related to the impacts of the COVID pandemic. As the market demand has increased for, for consumer goods, especially for premium products like Jones, the team has worked hard to keep up our supplies for packaging from glass to aluminum, as well as production and trucking capacity have all become more constrained. Working hand in hand with a great base of supply chain partners who we'd, who we'd also like to thank, the team has been able to, create, to, to creatively address these challenges, helping to keep up with the high demand and continue p- providing excellent service to our customers. In closing, I am very proud of the progress we have made in a very short time and realize there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. But recapping the call, one, we had four consecutive months of revenue growth, and we anticipate momentum will continue. Given this, we expect to close out the year strong with revenue growth and improved profitability compared to 2019. Two, we will continue to drive our costs in the total supply chain, improve our mix, and ultimately improve our margins. Three, we will continue to invest in our business across all functional areas. You heard me mention allocating resources several times throughout this presentation. Four, we will continue to grow our business in new channels like club and food service to drive incremental volume in 2021 and beyond. Five, we will continue to be the people's craft soda and use our labels as platforms and a voice for our consumers. And six, and most importantly, our employee safety will will remain our number one priority. And we will continue to listen to the advice of the health experts and act accordingly. Although continued uncertainties remain in the macro environment, our team is confident in our ability to stay dialed in on accelerating growth by staying focused and true to our three-year strategic plan. I want to thank our team, our customers, and our consumers for their continued brand loyalty and, and support. Before wrapping up the call, Jamie, Joe, and I would like to address some questions we, we received from investors via email over the last week. We have selected what we believe to be the most important and relevant questions to answer. Joe, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Mark. Let's start with our first question. Are there any updates you can share on the CBD-infused beverage initi- initiative? Is there any progress or highlights with Heavenly RX that are worth mentioning? And, uh, and Jamie, I'm going to answer that. Uh, as we said during the last call, nothing has changed since uh, we last spoke to this initiative several months ago. I do not have any updates to provide, and we're still awaiting our guidance from the FDA before we are able to move forward. We will be sure to keep you, the investors, abreast of any changes regarding the CBD initiative. Thanks, Jamie. Second question. Are there any updates on filling out the rest of the management team, for example, permanent CEO and CFO? Uh, We're pretty excited. Uh, We expect that we're going to announce a permanent CEO uh, in the coming weeks, uh, we will not be making any changes in the finance, uh, finance division at this time. All right, third question. Um, are you comfortable with your current financial position to continue growing the business, or do you anticipate having to raise additional capital to fund future growth initiatives? Yeah, this is Mark. Okay. I'll take this one. Um, although we are working to obtain an operating line of credit from a traditional lender, we are confident in our financial position and do not anticipate raising outside capital in the near future. Thanks, Mark. Are you still confident there are enough sustainable growth opportunities within the craft soda market as consumers move towards healthier beverage offerings? 
Yeah, this is Mark. I'll take this one too. Uh, we absolutely do. Um, we have seen great growth this year, but also have many markets and channels where we have tremendous upside. Okay, and then the last question. Given the effects of the global pandemic and, and the potential for other waves of lockdowns throughout the country, do you foresee any issues with your supply chain that could hinder your ability to deliver products or have enough raw materials slash packaging for production? Yeah, I'll take this is Mark again. I'll take this. Um, we, we do not see any issues. Uh, we have been working very closely with our supply chain partners and do not anticipate any interruption in our service levels moving forward. So, uh, thanks, Joe. Thanks, Mark. And uh, this concludes our Q&A session. Before turning the call back over to the operators, we'd like to thank everyone for listening to today's call, and we look forward to speaking with you when we report our fourth quarter and full year 2020 results. Thanks again for joining us. Gentlemen, this does conclude today's teleconference. You may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation.